Good morning from another beautiful day here in Valletta in Malta. Now, whenever I travel, I'm always super interested in tasting the authentic foods and the traditional cuisine in the place that I travel to. So today I've teamed up with Nick from Offbeat to do exactly that. We're gonna be tasting the traditional and authentic cuisine from this beautiful island and all the foods that you absolutely need to try when you visit. So, are we ready? Let's go, sir. Let's go. So, fun fact as we get started, Valletta, which is now the capital of Malta, was actually built as a fortress and not as a city. It was built by the Knights of St. John, of course, to protect this beautiful island against all the invading empires like the Ottomans, the Turks, and the French. So if you are looking for a very, very traditional old spice shop here in Valletta, there is no better place than George Zamet. They have a wonderful range of spices, flavors, and you've absolutely got to come and check it out if you are cooking for yourself here. And also one very unique thing about this shop is the gentleman that runs it has a concoction of 12 different spices that when you boil with red wine, is able to remove any nasty smells in your house. So if you've cooked curry, some fish, you want to remove it, boil it with red wine, problem solved. And this is where we're trying the famous pastizzi. So these pastizzi were the direct descendants of the pastry shell that was used in the desert to preserve food. The correct way to eat it is of course, with your hands, food tastes better that way. <laughs> So I have already had one of these before and I am a huge fan of them. The most authentic ones is the pea and a ricotta one. My favorite is the mushy peas, obviously being British. Taste test, here we go. Mm. I think the correct way to eat these is in silence, just to take in the flakiness of that pastry. The warmth of the mushy peas is so, so good. I mean, it, it might not sound the most appetizing because it's just mushy peas and pastry, but when you taste it, you realize actually how great this little delicacy is from Malta. So the reason that here in Malta they actually drink tea is because it was introduced by the British back in the 1800s. The reason that they drink evaporated milk is because the British did not like the idea of drinking unpasteurized milk. So, they drink it now with this evaporated milk and also sugar was the same. They used to drink it with honey. The Brits introduced sugar to the tea here in Malta and that's the way that these guys drink it now. Thank you so much. Bye bye. So as we are walking to our next cafe on the tour, we're walking through Merchant Street, which is one of the two most lively streets here in Valletta. It's a really great place to come in the evenings. Lots of restaurants, really lively, and live performers, singers, great place to come in the evenings. So one of the things that I've got to point out is I'm really impressed with the kind of cafes and restaurants that we are discovering on this food tour. Ordinarily, when you wander around, you're restricted to things like Time Out or TripAdvisor, and you're not necessarily going to be able to find the most traditional and authentic places within the city. And that's one of the great things about joining a food tour such as this one. We found this lovely little cafe, it's called Museum Cafe. I love the interior. It's very, um, they've got a lot of older memorabilia, like British memorabilia, and it's really cool to see because you can definitely see the British influence of this place. When you're in Malta, forget about drinking Fanta, Coca-Cola. The only refreshing drink that you need to worry about is this drink called Kinney. It is a orange-based drink, but it's sweet and bitter at the same time, weirdly. It tastes like marmalade, like fizzy marmalade, and it is absolutely delicious. I love it. Gotta drink it cold, though. That is a proper sandwich. That is a proper sandwich. <laughs> proper sandwich. That is a proper, a proper, sandwich. proper, proper Maltese sandwich. So my favorite kind of sandwich is a tuna sandwich, regardless. So I really appreciate this. And my favorite food is olives. So it's like a double whammy for me. This really is a great lunch spot here in Valletta. And something that I've noticed is you actually have locals using this cafe. It's Maltese owned, Maltese run and the staff here are Maltese, so you know you're getting the real deal. 
So this right here might look quite busy, but this is actually quite rare for Malta to see Republic Street this quiet. And quite honestly, there's still quite a lot of people here. So we have come to our next stop, which is known as the King's Own Band Club. And this is actually on Republic Street, which is the main street. But you will not find any tourists in this restaurant. This is a very authentic, traditional place where locals will come. And we have our first local dish on the table. This is the traditional Maltese salad. But, if you do order here, make sure you leave a big hole in the plate because it will offend the Maltese. So I'm gonna get stuck in. So the Maltese language actually comes from the Tunisian language about 1,200 years ago. Basically, because the knights who came to Malta didn't particularly like the Arabic sounds in the Tunisian language, they introduced the Italian language and that is how you get the Maltese language of today. It's basically an amalgamation of the Italian and old Tunisian language. So here in Malta, food has always been a difficult one because of the environment and the wind, the lack of rain. Agriculture has always been difficult. Farming has always been a struggle. And that is why all of the food here is very, very influenced by all the colonies that have come here. So that's why you guys have your love of Sunday roast from the British the love of pasta from, of course, the Italian influence, pastizzi from the, the Arabs, the Tunisians. Rabbits were introduced a very long time ago. It's not clear who introduced them, yeah. but they've become really, it's probably one of the most typical Maltese dishes. Yeah, I, I, you, you will see rabbit everywhere here in Malta. Either fried or rabbit stew, and it should always be eaten if you get rabbit pieces with your hands. With your hands. With your hands. So now I'm excited to get into this rabbit, which is obviously super, super authentic from here. But I'm only gonna be using my hands. Those wipes are gonna come in handy. Yes. But to complement it, we've also got some very traditional Maltese red wine. And I've been drinking their Maltese beer, which is known as Chisk. Is that pronounced correctly? And it is really refreshing. So we're having a super Maltese day today. The rabbit is so tender. It just falls off the bone. You can definitely taste the, um, the spices, which are influenced, of course, from the Tunisian influence. Mm, it's delicious. I can strongly suggest if you want to taste the authentic rabbit from Malta, this is the restaurant to do that in. I'm doing well because I can smell chocolate. Always makes everything better. And molten chocolate. Molten yeah. chocolate and he's going to infuse it with a liqueur made from typical Maltese produce. There's about five or six of them. He'll offer you a choice. And also in the shop, if I may say so, they have chocolate with a very distinctive Maltese selection. Look at this, Maltese coffee flavored chocolate. Peppered cheeselet flavored Peppered chocolate. Peppered cheese. Yes, that's what we've just been eating. Chocolate. That's just I'm what we've sure been eating. I'm not sure how I feel about that combination. Delicious. I'm not sure. Carob flavored chocolate. Carob flavor. Olive oil flavored chocolate. Sea salt, we have the best in the world. Sea salt flavored chocolate. Oh yeah, because you guys make sea salt. Correct. In Malta, I've we seen the salt have, flats. Absolutely, we have extraordinarily clean sea. We are the only European country which treats 100% of its waste before release into the sea. So that fact, together with strong currents, keeps the sea clean. And, that and that's why, why salt is your so sea salt is so, yes. so high Plentiful quality. and clean. Thank you very much. So we've got molten chocolate, Prickly pear liqueur Authentic. from Malta. Authentic. You're yes. very good help. <laughs> mm. Oh my lord. 
So is this something you guys drink, like on a regular? Whoever likes it, how can you not like it? Ah. Oh. And you use your finger. Of course, how do you Like a typical Maltese. This is the tradition, this is the way that you eat things. Otherwise you don't get the best bit. You don't. The, the Madagascan chocolate with the Maltese prickly pear liqueur. Oh. A winning combination. A winning combination, it's the winner. No, it's fine. So this is the prickly pear yes, chocolate. Yes, prickly pear chocolate. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, very similar to what we just drank. But, uh, it's a bit of me. Version. This is a bit of me. So let's see how it compares to the molten chocolate version. A lot to live up to. Mm. It's not hard. It's beautiful and soft. It's perfect. Absolutely delicious. Thank you very much, my Cheers, man. Buddy. Have a all great the best, day. yeah. So all throughout Valletta and Malta, you will find these wooden balconies. Yes. And just tell me about those. They're... The wooden balconies originated very probably in North Africa yeah. as a method of stopping your wife, if you were a Muslim, from parading in the street where other men could look at her. Right. So the idea, the symbolism of it, you notice the way it's built outside the confines of the house. That means you're giving your wife the outside world without her parading in the street. Yes, without her being visible yes, to other men. Yes, yes, exactly. Wow. And you see them everywhere because a lot of households have adopted them because it's become part of the yes, authentic we, look. Yes, the first one we believe was built by the Grand Master, the leader of the Knights in the 17th yeah. century. And then obviously by time, people who had you know, the money and, and were able to do it started to copy and today to the extent that it's all over Malta and become known as the Maltese balcony. And do you know what? It is absolutely beautiful and really great to it photograph. Is. And each one is, is different to all of the others, if you notice. Totally unique. And we are here at our next and final stop. Look at this view all over the letter. You can also see Emdina in the distance. Upper Baraka Gardens over there. You've got the three cities. It's definitely a lovely dining spot. Sit here and look out into Malta. So here we have Cactus Liqueur, which is super famous here in Malta. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. delicious it's very sweet and it's so easy to drink and it's lovely really cold as well so date fritters which have been introduced of course again by the Tunisians mm. warm tasty delicious delicious pastry now the guys that run this food tour also publish this book called The Definitively Good Guide to Restaurants in Malta and Gozo. And they basically publish a list of the top 150 restaurants throughout Malta and the island of Gozo. And they detail all of this in a really comprehensive fashion. So you can rely on this book if you are looking to eat at the best spots in Malta. So forget about TripAdvisor, forget about Time Out, forget about all of those other websites. This is the only guide that you need. And by coming on this tour, this is included. So you are all set for the rest of your trip when it comes to eating. And what a fabulous way to finish our food tour today. Uh, La Sanc, this really is the spot to come if you want to have an incredible view over Valletta and just enjoy a drink maybe a light meal and just admire the views. It's just absolutely stunning from up here. And that just about finalizes our food tour. And this has been absolutely incredible. Nick, Sir. you've been so knowledgeable. I'm so, so grateful for your help on this tour. A pleasure, a pleasure. It's, it's been absolutely wonderful learning from local, seeing and experiencing and tasting the most traditional things in Malta. So guys, if you also want to book this tour, the link will be in the description below. I highly recommend it. It is the best way to discover the flavors of Malta and to put you in good standing for the rest of your trip. 
so that you know exactly what you do and don't like and want to taste more. So if you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button down below and also consider subscribing and press the bell notification so you get notified every time that I post new videos to this channel. And also if you wanna see more videos from here in Malta, click this playlist here and have a look at those videos there. But as always, I will see you in the next one.